Hello and welcome to the Natural Valley Vlog. My name is Jason Lee, Natural Valley Doctor, and I'm here to talk about some tips on health and wellness. The topic today is about seasonal health for your family. It's back to school time, and every time this year, I always see the same kinds of cases coming in, and we do see them sporadically throughout the year, and we'll go over some of the timelines for those. But people just get sick. You see a lot of 24-hour flu bugs, 100-day coughs, um, people with sinus congestion, nasal congestion, or just chronic runny noses. Um, these are not allergy related, they're relating to viral infections or bacterial infections. Um, and it's concerning because, I mean, you'll see them happening over and over again. You know, kids will be at home, parents will get sick from their kids, they'll go to work, pass off to other people. It just goes around and around and around. Uh, sometimes you have families where there's four or five kids in the family and it just goes through every kid. Um, so we're going to go over some steps on how to deal with that. And I'm going to give you a timeline of what to expect during the year with respect to when these illnesses happen and how to deal with them. So one of the biggest immune suppressors of all, I mean the absolute biggest one of all time is sugar. And you'll hear me talk about this a lot in vlogs and people always cringe when I talk about it, but it's, it's truly an epidemic. I mean the sugar intake has gone up so much and the body truly cannot handle the amount of sugar we take. One teaspoon of sugar will suppress your immune system for up to half a day. So in a lot of foods that we eat that are processed, if people do eat processed foods, it contains more than one teaspoon of sugar. Sometimes it might contain five to six teaspoons or even tablespoons of sugar. So you'll get kids that are eating this stuff all the time and their immune system is chronically weakened um, and it creates a lot of illness for them and makes them susceptible to many things. So people all say, oh, well, my son got this cold from the other kid in class. I mean, yes, but if his immune system is strong, he probably wouldn't have got it in the first place. So the key is building the immune system as opposed to avoiding people that get sick because they're all over the place. In the 1900s, I mean, the average sugar intake for the average North American was about five pounds per year. By 1994, it was somewhere between 40 to 50 pounds of sugar per year. And by 2014, it was somewhere around 150 to 180 pounds of sugar a year. That's a lot of sugar. And sugar, as I've talked about earlier, is hidden in so many things. It's not just chocolate bars and candy and stuff like that. It's hidden in a lot of foods we eat, like breads and crackers and prepackaged stuff and, and you know sauces and condiments. Um, it's in so many things, so I really, really ask people to read the label. Also look out for ingredients like high fructose corn syrup, which are horrible and super glycemic, and they really, really affect people a lot um, with their sugar. So let's go over some of the times a year we see a lot of illness. September is always a big time. We see that all the time. Uh, it's back to school. I mean, kids are coming off of summer, so they might have been up too late. Uh, maybe eating the wrong things over the summer and then they come back and now they're all back together, new classes, new people, mixing, all these kids coming back together. So you get a lot of kids sick around this time. And that goes pretty much all of September into early October. And then unfortunately in early October, we start getting into sort of the Halloween stuff, which sounds kind of crazy. People will buy Halloween candy early because maybe it's on sale, start giving it to their kids um, as snacks and, and things like that. Or there's Halloween parties as you're leading up to Halloween. Um, it's just an intense amount of sugar. I mean, I know sometimes the chocolate bars are small and people think, well, it's a small chocolate bar. Um, but overall, like three of those little chocolate bars add up to one full chocolate bar. So in the end, the sugar intake is massive. And then, of course, you have Halloween itself, um, you know, where kids will get tons of candy. I mean, what kid needs four pounds of candy? Um, and people say, well, it's okay. We, we give them only a small amount every day, but that'll go on for about a month or two. So you're adding small amounts of candy every day for a month. That's enough to totally suppress the immune system. There's lots of things out online that are kind of cool, like the Switch Witch program, where you can go in and kind of, you know, switch um, the candy for a toy or some sort of gift card or something like that. Just something to get them away from the candy. I mean, my father used to do that as a kid because I absolutely love Legos. So he would say, well, give me all the candy and I'll give you Legos. So my dad used to weigh the candy and whatever weight the candy was determined how many pieces of Lego I got, which was I was totally fine with because Lego to me was gold. So anyway, use whatever way you can to get away from it. But I mean, you can get let the kid have some sugar for that day, but they don't need it for the month. So that makes kids sick basically most of October. And most of November and of course after that we head into December which is you know the holiday season so the sweets start ramping up for that as well I think it's not that I don't want people to enjoy their holiday or enjoy Halloween or enjoy these things it's just that people will get sugar from foods around that holiday time which is totally fine but they'll be still eating it prior to the holiday season and much after the holiday season. And that's the problem, is the con chronic consumption of sugar over a long period of time. So January is also a very, very brutal time of year. We see tons and tons of people coming in with all these infections and colds and, and flus and whatnot. And it's usually because of the Christmas rush. 
February is a tough time as well for people because in February, it's so cold um, and a lot of people get ill from the cold not that cold makes you sick but cold weakens the immune system that change from hot to cold back and forth also bothers the body it drops the immune system as well so people get sick and then you go into um, March with that a little bit March break and then April you got Easter so Easter again more chocolate and candy so again it's, it's not about not enjoying these things but do it during the holiday season don't do it before and certainly don't do it weeks after uh, that's the problem the average kid diet is also heavily immune suppressive. I mean, when I go to school sometimes and talk to kids or do classroom talks, you'll see it in the classrooms, you see it all over the place. The average kid diet is basically 95% starch, sugar, processed meats, and maybe juice, um, which I would not consider a good source of vitamin C. So it's not uncommon to have a kid start off breakfast with some sort of grainy product or a cereal, um, a processed cereal or whatnot, maybe some sort of snack, a croissant, I'm not too sure. Lunch is usually a sandwich with some sort of luncheon meat in it, maybe some cheese, some cookies, a juice box. You come home, cheese and crackers, maybe more cookies. Maybe if you're lucky, some fruit. And then dinner is usually pasta or some starch-based product, uh, maybe with a bit of meat. They don't like vegetables, um, things like that. So again, if you're eating a diet like that all the time, it is very, very difficult to regulate the immune system. It's very difficult for the immune system to build itself because the immune system needs protein to build. Immunoglobins that attack you know, viruses and deal with bacteria come from protein. So we need protein to drive that process to happen. So there are a couple of things you can really, really do to boost the immune system. Um, number one is eat greens. I mean, these are very simple things. Um, you don't have to eat every single green. I mean, some kids don't like certain vegetables, and that's fine. As long as they can pick between three to five vegetables to eat that you can rotate through, that's fantastic. So it could be broccoli, it could be asparagus, it could be zucchini, it could be cauliflower, it could be you know, spinach or arugula, it could be, I mean, celery and peppers sort of count as maybe half a vegetable, um, those kinds of things. But getting greens in is absolutely important. If they don't do it raw, you can definitely do it by roasting it. I find a lot of kids like it when you roast it, put some quality olive oil on top, a little touch of salt and pepper, it gives it some flavor. It seems to bring out more flavor in certain vegetables as opposed to just steaming them. Uh, Stirring frying them also helps too. So that's fantastic. Um, number two is eat real food. I mean, food that comes out of a box, it doesn't matter really what it is. It can't be that nutritious, especially when you read the ingredients. They have additives and preservatives in these foods that are designed to keep them fresh for a long period of time. But those additives and preservatives kill bacteria, but they also kill the child's bacteria. And we'll talk about probiotics later, but that bacteria lining is absolutely essential to building immune function. So try and stay away from box goods and go more real food. Uh, number three is drink water. I mean, a lot of kids don't like water in general. It doesn't taste good. I mean, there's other things that taste sweeter or better. Water is the ideal uh, liquid we should be having. Um, not juice, not milk, not all these things out there. Um, a lot of them are loaded with sugar. I mean, some of them will say it's made from 30% real juice. Well, what's the other 70%? I mean, I'm not too sure what that is, but I can guarantee it's not particularly good. Um, number four is a big one, and it's tough with this age of technology, is, is the sleep. Um, ideally for toddlers, I mean, they should be in bed by like 6.30 or 7, tweens like 9 at the latest, and teens by, I mean, 10, 10.30 at the latest. A lot of the times, these are times are not followed. You got kids going to bed at 10 o'clock, you got teens going to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, and it's really hard to get to sleep properly when they're on their laptops. I mean, we have cell phones, the technology's on all the time. Um, sleep is absolutely important and it's not just the amount of sleep you get but when you sleep the ideal times of sleep are between roughly like between 7 to 10 p.m. at night to 6 a.m. in the morning I mean, a lot of people will go to bed super super late um, they'll wake up maybe for their alarm but they're not feeling great and because the body never gets that restful sleep it doesn't rejuvenate doesn't regulate the immune system and causes immune weakness and of course when we're tired um, and not feeling great people aren't craving healthy foods we're craving things that we aren't so shouldn't have like sugars and and high carbohydrate type things just to get the blood sugar up so sleep is absolutely important and technology I mean it's a tough one right with kids um, there are some families that take the technology away at night there's you know they have to give it back to the parent uh, or they have other ways where they shut the Wi-Fi off at certain times. I don't really know what the best way to do, but getting them off the technology is absolutely important because even if they say they're going to bed, I mean, they're on these things all night long. I have some patients that their friends will text them late at night. They'll wake up, text back, and they'll try and go back to sleep. Anytime you interrupt the sleep, it also affects the immune system as well. So proper sleep is absolutely key. 
Um, with respect to things you can do supplement wise to help um, and techniques I mean a good multivitamin is always good for kids and don't get the ones that are, have the gummy stuff in them or candy stuff in them you can tell when you read the ingredients that there's sugar on it or if it looks like candy it's probably like candy so yes there's vitamins in there but because it's loaded with sugar I wouldn't advise it um, get a high quality children's multivitamin that doesn't have these additives in it uh, vitamin C is also fantastic you can get vitamin C in liquid forms, you can get vitamin C in powdered forms. But vitamin C is a cheap, great immune support that can be added to diet. It can be mixed into things, or you can just mix it in water and drink it on its own. It's fantastic. Um, with kids, I mean, anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C is totally fine. I mean, with high dose vitamin C, the only side effect is you get loose bowel movements. So if it's loose, then just reduce the dose a little bit. But vitamin C is fantastic. I know when I get sick, I take somewhere between 8 to 10,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C. Um, and I usually just blast it and usually by the next day whatever I might have had is totally gone. Another technique that's fantastic is a sock therapy and we'll have that written at the bottom of this vlog. The sock therapy is basically you take a pair of thin cotton socks or thin socks in general, you run them under cold water and you wring them until they're almost dry. Then you take those socks and put them on your feet. Which sounds totally weird because it's like, well, they're cold, it's going to feel horrible. But just trust me on that. You put the cold sock on the foot, you take a pair of dry socks, put them over top of those cold, damp socks and go to bed. And by morning, the, the congestion, the, the lung congestion, the cough, a lot of it is a lot better. Now, how does that work? When the cold socks on your foot, the blood rushes down to heat up the sock, which is why by morning, both socks are totally hot and dry. And as the blood is rushing down, it's draining the lymphatic system, which stimulates an immune response. So the key with a the sock therapy is to do it the moment you think something's coming on. The biggest mistake people make is when they're getting sick and they're like, well, it's not that bad, I'll wait until it gets bad, then I'll do something about it. That's too late, you wanna get it as early as possible. So the moment you think you're getting sick or you think your kid's getting sick because of just their behaviors off, you can just tell there's something not right, do the sock therapy, get the vitamin C in there. Um, another thing is probiotics. Pro means good, biotic means living. The gut bacteria in our body has a massive effect on our immune function. In fact, it is the regulator of our immune system. And that's why I'm so picky about sugars and not eating the right, or eating the right foods because those foods and sugars have a massive effect on our gut microbiome. It has a huge effect on our bacteria flora. And that's the big root of our immune system. So taking a probiotic absolutely helps out a lot. There's many probiotics for children. I mean, speak to your naturopath about that. They can give you a good one. Um, but that's absolutely essential. Now taking a probiotic and vitamin C doesn't mean you can eat garbage. Right? You still have to eat as well as you can. And by doing the eating and these therapies together, it can build a strong immune system that will last for life regardless of what season it is. So people always ask me, well, if I can't give my kid sugar, what am I gonna give my kid for snacks? Um, one of my favorite things are nuts and seeds. Obviously, those are fantastic. Um, even fruit is a lot better than, than sugary things. But one of the, the things I really love are fat bombs. We're gonna have a whole bunch of recipes listed underneath this um, vlog so you can take a look at them. But fat bombs are basically ketogenic snacks that you can use for not just for kids, but adults as well. There's basically about four or five main ingredients. The big ingredient base is fat, so it's actually coconut oil. And you can add like 100% cocoa powder to it. You can use some stevia, which is a natural sweetener that's zero calories as a sweetener if you like. Some people throw a bit of cinnamon in there, maybe a touch of sea salt, maybe some vanilla extract, and you basically mix it all together into that oil. You can even throw nuts and seeds in there if you want to. And you just pour it into an ice cube tray and then freeze it. And it comes out basically like fudge. Um, it's fantastic and it's, it's very, very dense, it's very filling and it's basically a grainless, sugarless, you know, junkless um, dessert that can be made easily. Kids can make it, you don't need a, a stove or a, an oven to make, it doesn't require heating, you just basically mix everything together, you pour it into the ice cube tray and you freeze it and within half an hour it's basically done. Um, and they are fantastic. So there's a whole bunch of different recipes. You take a look at them, you'll get an idea of how to kind of make the base of it. And then it's just whatever you want to add in after. It could be fruit, it could be, you know, um, coconut stuff, it could be whatever nut you want, it could be any kind of flavored compound. Um, it's fantastic. They even have savory ones in there as well. So take a look at those. They're just great snacks for kids. It keeps them full, gives them that sugar fix or that, that sweet fix, I guess you could say, and they are healthy. So take a look and uh, thanks for listening.